All right, so we got a moment there. We'll start, so we've been dealing with forces up till now. We'll start talking about moments. So moments are the twist about an axis. So the general idea here is if the moment occurs in a given plane, the axis is normal to the plane, okay? So if that's the plane, the axis in this case would be coming out of the page. How about the best I could draw that? Like that. So I think of the axis as the axle about which the moment turns. And then the uh, moment then is the wheel that turns. All right, so a common way to generate a moment is to apply a force at an offset distance, like so. Okay. And that's a very common way to generate this. Uh, another word for moment is torque. Okay. So what, what happens if you've got a force at an offset distance is you develop a twisting action about a point. And that's what a moment is. Okay. All right, so you've got a force and a distance. Now, the common ways you can increase the moment, one way is to increase the force, of course, just pull harder. So that's one way to do it. But the other way, you know, probably more common or, you know, a, a way that people think about is also to increase the distance. So if you've ever, you know, this device here actually does that. It, it gets a force at a big offset distance to get that uh, moment to open the lid. Um, you can get cheater bars for wrenches that will help you turn bolts if they're frozen. So a cheater bar just uh, extends the length of the wrench is what it does. So you'd have a bar like so that comes out and um, allows you to push further out. Okay. All right, so on page 260 there, we've got what a moment is, and we have the ways we can increase the torque, increase the force or increase the offset distance. Okay, so uh, now what a moment is, the kind of the official definition that I think of, or one definition anyway, is a force times a distance, but particularly the distance is per the perpendicular distance from the force to the point. So to use the distance, it should make a right angle with the force, and it should extend from the force to the point about which you're taking moments. So there is a point, generally speaking, about which you're taking moments. If you think of turning a, a bolt or something like that, the point would be the center of the bolt. Okay, so the distance should be uh, perpendicular. Yeah, the force and distance are perpendicular. Yeah, I guess you could say the force should be perpendicular to the distance. Yeah. Okay. All right, in 2D, there's a sign convention. Counterclockwise is positive. Clockwise is negative. That comes from the right-hand rule because a 2D moment is really a Z moment. You name moments after the axis they spin around. So if you spin your hand, your fingers are your right hand by right-hand rule, counterclockwise, your thumb points out of the page in the positive Z direction. So that's why a counterclockwise moment is positive. It's not because, the, it's not because that's on the right-hand convention? I guess there's different ways to express it. I, you know, um, I think of the moment sign convention as being related to the sign on the z axis. Is how I think about it. But yeah, there might be other ways to really think about it. But however, you do. I mean, the the bottom line is counterclockwise positive when you're in two D. All right. Now to get these moments here, you just take the distance and the force and multiply them together you'll get a pound foot and newton meter units on the answer. 
and you can either give it a sign to indicate direction, positive counterclockwise, negative clockwise, or you can just put an arrow on them to show which way they're going. So there's a couple of moments there. And if you ever have a, something called a torque wrench, you, you'll see a rating on that in either inch pounds or foot pounds or uh, Newton meters. Torque wrench measures the torque that you apply. So there's a couple moments, just simple ones calculated up for us. And again, this is all based on the force being perpendicular to the distance. That's the idea here. Okay. We're good. All right, now we got a couple little uh, extra things about this that we deal with. One of them is called transmissibility of a force. So let's say we've got this force up at the top as shown, and you want to find the moment of that about point A. Okay, now notice you don't have a direct perpendicular distance there from A to that force. But the transmissibility rule there says you can apply the force anywhere you want on its line of action. Line of action is just the, the direction the the force points and that line then extended both directions. So what you could do is take that 600 Newton force and just slide it down until it is perpendicular to the distance. And then you could use that three meter distance there times the 600 Newtons and you could get the moment. So you could move that force anywhere along that vertical line you want when you analyze it. And that can make calculations uh, easier. Okay. So that would be 600 times 3. It would be 1,800 Newton meters positive counterclockwise. Now, when you're actually pulling on something, isn't the torque constantly changing? If you're just patrolling in the same direction, um, yeah, if, if you're pulling on a wrench up, let's say, as the wrench rotates, the distance will change. Yeah, although I think when you pull on a wrench, you normally pull norm, you know, perpendicular to the shaft of the wrench. Yeah. You know, what we tend to do in this class is kind of take a snapshot at a given moment and look at it. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing as opposed to tracking it through an arc of movement. Okay. Now the other method, the other thing here is uh, pretty, pretty useful to us, and this has kind of a fancy name. It's named after a French scientist, I think. So I had a French student last year, and she told me, and I don't pronounce French too well, but that's Vanillon or something like that. Anybody speak French? Is that in the ballpark? I don't quite, you know, I never could get that accent down too good. Anyway, so this, whoever Verignon was, uh, there's Verignon's theorem. And it sounds confusing like theorems often do. A moment about a of a force about a point is equal to the sum of the moments of the force's components about the point. Okay. So that's what uh, this theorem says. And what this does is actually allow us to calculate moments in a nice, systematic, straightforward way instead of having to do it hard ways, I guess. Is. So I'll, I'll kind of show this by example. I don't think I've got these written down. They're, they're kind of simple little sketches, so you can put them somewhere if you like. You know, I'm, I'm going to run maybe three, I can't remember, three or these examples or something like that. So, or two or three. So I'll just draw them up somewhere. Just a little square you know, rectangle on a stand there, you might say, on a, on a shaft. So we're going to find the moment about point A. 
So sum of m a, sum, you know, is adding up all the moments, equals something with a question mark there. Got the dimensions on that rectangular sign or whatever that is, that board or block or whatever. And then we got a 70 degree angled 8,000 Newton force in that upper right hand corner. So what we want to do is find the moment about A is what we'd like to do here. And that is a common thing to do is find a moment about a point. You know, usually you specify a given point. Now, if we were going to do this, see, we, we've got to use a perpendicular distance to the force. So if we were to do this with this particular force, what we'd have to do would be to extend the force along its line of action and then find a distance from a perpendicular distance from point A to the line of action of that force but that's, you know, that's going to get into a little bit of geometry there, and it's a lot more trouble than I'd want just to calculate a little moment there. So there's another way you can approach this that works a lot, um, a little bit easier, okay? And the way to approach this is to take the force and break it up into X and Y components. Use a bit of trig, and then normally your dimensioning is in X and Y directions also. So if you took that force and do the trig on it there, sine and cosine of 70 times the 8,000, you'll get x and y components of the force. And with the dimensioning there on that rectangle, we also have x and y components of distance. And they're very easily combined. Okay? So we don't have to do any special geometry or anything like that. We just kind of break the forces and distances up into x's and y's, and then we combine them. Okay. So when you calculate moments, what you do is you combine unlike components together. Okay, so fx dy or fy d sub x. Okay, that's what moments are. Moments are not fx d sub x. They are not f sub y d sub y. You got to combine unlike components together because that's what generates the twist for you. Having a distance in the x and a force in the y will get you a twist. Okay, so that creates a twist. Or if you have or distance. You know, distance in the x, force in the y will get you a twist. Distance in the y, force in the x will get you a twist. But if the distance and force are in the same direction, you don't get any twists. See? Nothing, nothing turns. So moments are made by combining unlike components of force and distance. That's where the perpendicular comes in. See? Right. They always get the same uh same change to momentum regardless of what you're doing. Like only the moment or only the force changes, right? Um you mean like linear momentum or you know there's yeah. different kinds of momentum. Yeah, how much the whole thing is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. As I understand your question. Yeah. Did you get a question? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. So um, when we're trying to when you say find the moment about the A there are, right. We're going to add the total moment and get the total effect of that 8,000 Newton force and how it would cause a moment about A. That's what we're going to find. Okay. Now to, so you add 
add them together. Now, I don't really think of there being an X and Y component of moment. Moment is just moment. It's just a it's twist. Yeah, well, it's actually a Z vector. If you're in two-dimensional problem, you've got X and Y axes. The moment is a wheel. The axis, the axis is the axle of the wheel. So a moment always is a Z when you're in 2D. So, you know, I, I, so I, I just think of a moment as being a twist. So, you, yeah, we'll add both of them together. Because what we got there, we'll take both components, add them up, get the total. Okay. So what we'll do there is we'll take the 7, 5, 1, 8. So, so we good on that so far? We good on that? Ah, I do that. There we go. 7, 5, 1, 8 times 1.2. So what I'm doing there is I'm taking the Y component of force, 7, 5, 1, 8, and I'm multiplying it by the x component of distance. That gets me that offset, that perpendicular sort of offset that gets me the twist. And then I'm going to take the 2, 7, 3, 6 times 0.9. Okay. You're saying the 7518 is negative? Pointing down? Okay, the, the 7518 creates a negative moment. Not because it's pointing down, but because about A, it spins clockwise. Uh, yeah, think of like holding a book by the lower left hand corner and pushing on that upper corner down. That book will rotate clockwise, which is negative. Now notice that the 2736 is going to the left, but it creates a positive moment. So it's not about force signs. There's no connection, direct connection between force signs and moment signs. You look at how the object would rotate. That's how you de determine the sign on moments. All right. So if I push down, that will go clockwise. So that's negative. So the 7518 times 1.2 is negative. If I push to the left, that will come around counterclockwise, so it's positive. Okay. So just be sure that you know you remember that, that you, you don't really look at the sign and the force when you're doing 2D moment. Um, you know, you, what you look at is just which way things will rotate. Hmm. Unless that's a good. We'll try this again. Okay, so the two seven three six would rotate counterclockwise, so it's positive. I don't think I've got a pen anymore. Yeah, which one? Um, we'll add them together is what we would do. So we will have one answer. It's the sum of the two things that we add together. If that, if I'm understanding your question properly. I'm having some graphics problems here, obviously. Okay. So the results of this are just additive. So I just add the two together. Okay, I see what I'm doing. I do that sometimes. There we go. That's better. Okay, so the net moment is 6560. So if that were a, what I call a pin joint, a hinge kind of thing here at A, what would happen is that plate would start to rotate clockwise because it's a neg net negative moment. All right, so this is the standard drill of how to handle an angled force. You know, you, you generally speaking, you don't do a bunch of geometry and figure out the perpendicular distance. Generally speaking, what you do is you break up the angled force into x and y components and find angled direct, or excuse me, x and y directions also and combine those to get moments. 
Those work to do the email updates, just more trouble, right? Right, it would work, but yeah, it's more trouble, and also it's a little bit more detailed. You know, it's there's more more prone to error, I think. On that. So just combine f x and d sub y and f y and d sub x to get the moments. Okay. All right. Okay, here's a similar uh, similar shape. We've moved moved the connect and connection point up to B. Um, same dimensions, but I've added a force down in the lower left hand corner. Why don't you find the moment about point B? So it's the same shape, same force in the upper right-hand corner, a new force down in the lower left-hand corner, and a different point we're taking moments about, I'm taking moments about B now. Thank you. 
Seventeen seventy eight reserve house. And I want to zero it out because it's pushing right on to the so basically the uh phone arm is just the object that is zero for that X phone. So it doesn't cause any moments zero. The other two cause a moment and the net. Uh, moment then comes out to be 1,778. Okay, so there's 2,736 pushes right on, uh, right on B is what it does, so it zeroes out, okay? So that goes right on B, so the moment arm for that is zero. You all right with that? You, you can't you can't turn a wrench if you push the handle right at the bolt. It just doesn't do anything. You got to push. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess it could be something, but it, it's not gonna. No, what's that? Yeah, right. It ain't gonna help us any. So all we want to do here is push it an offset. Then we get the twisting action. Okay, that's the idea. All right. Everybody okay with that? Okay. So, uh, so that's a bit on 2D moments there. Okay. Now, I guess while I'm thinking about it, now I've got a nice square shape there, a block or something like that. What if I change that? What if it were a shape like this instead? So instead of being a block, it's kind of a hook shape like that. Okay. Would that change anything or not? Or it doesn't bend in any way. No, it doesn't bend. Yeah. More like an embrace. Yeah, it's not going to change our moment at all. Right? It, okay, so when I think of doing these calculations, and we'll get into this later a bit, but I, I don't care about what the object looks like that connects everything together. If B is connected down here, and if it's connected by solid material to there, it doesn't matter how it's connected. It's just where the forces are. If, if it's a, what's called a rigid object there, it, it's, you know, it's going to act the same way. So, you know, this thing could do like that and come on back. It doesn't make any difference. You know, it just, it, the moment is what it is. It doesn't matter. The actual shape of the object doesn't matter. Where the forces are located, of course, matters. But the shape of the object <coughs> does not. Okay. All right. Okay, so, so that's just a little bit there on 2D moments. So any questions on it?
All right, let's look at 3D moments. Sometimes these happen in three space. Okay. So a 3D moment of a force about a point has three components, x, y, and z, which are indicated by the i, j, and k unit vectors. Um, so we're looking at a twist about a line through a point and parallel to the x-axis. That's the x component, shown by an i unit vector. Twist about a line through the point and parallel to the y-axis is the y moment indicated by the j unit vector, and then the z-axis would be indicated by the k unit vector. To determine signs, you use the right-hand rule. Twist your fingers in the direction of the moment and look at the direction your thumb points. That, that'll tell you the sign on the moment. So let's find the i component of the moment of the force about point A. And I'm on page, what is it, 270? Yeah, All right, so let's have a look at what this thing does. Now, when I say an x component, which is indicated by the i unit vector, what I mean is about a line that's parallel to the x-axis, and we're doing the moment about a, so that line would go through point a. So think of that as a hinge line. Like if you have a door, that's the hinge line. Then what we're going to do is push on the hinge with that F1. And see, that's going to roll around that hinge. It's going to go up and over like that. And that color isn't working too well, I don't think. There we go. So what's the magnitude of that moment, then? Yeah, it's 1,200. What we're doing, we're taking the force, 300 newtons, times the offset distance, which is perpendicular to it. That's 4 meters. And that is going to rotate about that hinge line, which is the parallel to the x-axis. So that's an I moment. And then what's the sign on that? If you roll your fingers like that, is your thumb going to, of your right hand, is your thumb going to point in the positive x direction or the negative x direction? Positive. So that's a positive moment. Okay, so MAX is 1,200 Newton meters. And then that would be an I, okay? Once you figure out, let's see, the one below there. Now, why don't I mention one thing here first? So what we got, we got an FZ in the Z direction. We got a DY, and what we get out of FZ and DY is MX, all right? So we've covered all three directions, X, Y, and Z. The moment is X. That's made up of a Y distance and a Z force, okay? And that's how these things work. Between the distance, the force, and the moment, you cover each axis once. So a y distance with a z force gets you an x moment. All right. So this other one here, what are we going to get on that? So what do we got? We've got 600 newtons, 3 meters, anybody just think about that and figure out the sign on that one. You got a sign on that one? I think it's negative, yeah. Fingers curl around under that force. My thumb points into the page. My right thumb, that indicates negative. Okay. So that's the uh, 
how you get the sign on the moment. Your, if you use your right hand, right fingers to turn in the direction of the moment, your right thumb pointing out of the, pointing in the positive axis direction is positive, and the negative axis direction is negative. Okay. So that's how that works. All right. So let's see how we could go about calculating. Uh, Kind of a real one here. Let's look on the next page. Now, this is this is going to involve a little bit of visualization here. This is 280, I think. I'm not sure, but I think it's 280. And what we got there is a block. We've got a 600 Newton force applied on the line of action from B to C. And we want to find the moment about A. And I give you the uh, dimensions of the block, and I give you some coordinates also. Okay. So let's find the moment of FBC about A. Okay. Now the first thing I want to do is get a force vector for, for the force that goes from B to C. It's got a 600 Newton magnitude and it goes from B to C. The coordinate of C is 0, 0, 0.2 and the coordinate of B is 0.4.70. So I'll take C and subtract off B, and I'll get negative 0.4, negative 0.7, and 0.2. Okay. Take the square root of sum of the squares, I'll get 0.831. Divide through by that, I'll get the unit vector. Factor it up by 600, and I get the force vector. So the force from B to C is negative 289, negative 506, and 144. Okay. And that's a process that, you know, um, you really, I hope you know it by now. You know, if you don't, definitely figure it out here soon. Okay. So are we okay with that, getting a force vector out of that? Okay. All right. All right. Now what we want to do then is find the moment of that force vector about point A. Now you can put the force anywhere you want on its line of action. You could put it wherever you like. So I'd probably put it on the easiest place I could think to put it, which is probably C, because there's a nice simple distance from A to C that I can use, okay? So I'll just go ahead and put that force at C. I could put it at B also, but if I do that, I'll have a little bit more complicated of a distance. So I won't do that right off the bat. I'll just put it at C first, okay? because it's easier. Less time, less mistakes, if it's easier. So what I've done there on your, what I'm projecting is I've got that force shown in its component form, form at C. So 506 to the left for negative x. Um, no, I'm sorry, 506, I got that wrong. So 289 is negative for the x, 506 is negative for the y, and 144 is the Z. And I've got it broken up into components because that makes it easier to see what the moment's doing, okay? So negative 289 in the X, negative 506 in the Y, and 144 in the Z. Okay, and then what I'll do, I'll find the moment that each one of these forces creates about A. So why don't we do that? This will be a little bit easier one here, so we'll start with this. How about that 506? What's that 506 going to do about A? Or hang on, should we start with that or should we do the other one? Um, actually, let's start with the 140. Well, no, I don't want to do the 144 either. Okay, I'll, I'll start with the. Well, let's see. Sorry about this. Let me, I just want to kind of get it together here. Um, yeah, I want to start with the 506. There we go. I do. So 506. No, I don't. But anyway, it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, all right. So let's look at the 506. So what does the 506 do about A? What type of moment does it cause? The force is 506. What's the distance? 
it's point four, which is this distance right here along that edge going from C to A. What's the direction of that thing as far as a moment is concerned? It's, uh, I agree it's positive, but it's not along X. What, what, what axis is it spinning about? The Z. The axis about which it spins, that's, the, that's what the moment is. So that's a K moment. Okay? So if the moment is a wheel, the axle of the wheel is the vector. Okay? So if I think of having like a rectangle like that, and if I hinge that rectangle along the Z axis, that would spin about the hinges. The 506 would spin that about the hinges. You okay with that? Okay. And that's going to be a positive because it would spin like that. So that's plus. Now, another little thing you could do on this is look at the force. That's an F sub Y. The distance is what? A D sub X, right? And I'm not caring about signs here. So I got X, Y, so that means my moment is Z. That's another way to remember, you know, which is which on this. Okay. All right. How about the 144? What's that doing? It's a Z, isn't it? What what distance connects it to A? Um, we've got a point two and a point four. I think A is on that top surface, just as this force is. So I think it's point four again. That's what it is. Okay. So I'm going to take the one forty four, and I'm also then I'm going to. Uh, Multiply that by that 0.4 meter distance right here. See, I could run hinges right there in the y direction, and that thing would spin. And sure enough, I've got a fz, I've got a d sub x, so that gets me a y moment because I got x, y, and z. Now, which way does that one spin, positive or negative? Yeah, it's going to be positive because that one's coming up and around like that, okay? And that, that if I turn my fingers in my right hand that way, my thumb points in the positive Y direction. So there you go. How about the 289? What does that do as far as moments are concerned? Yeah, that's it. It ain't doing much, because what it's doing, if you look at it, it's directed right through A. It's not going to cause any spin about A, see? It's just going to push on A. It won't cause any moment. Okay, so we're going to get a zero I out of that. Okay. So visually speaking, that that's the moment. Now, I'm going to mention a couple of things here about this. We're almost out of time, but... Um, <coughs> This visualization is a little challenging, more for some than others. Some people just do it naturally. Some people have to work at it. Um, and there is a tool we can use. Instead of looking at this and kind of squinting and figuring out which, which things go in which direction, we're going to use something called a cross product to do this. It'll just kind of knock these out for us. So if you're not visualizing this real well, don't worry. we we got another method for this that'll work a little bit more readily. However, if you are going to work in mechanical civil fields, work on your visualization. You know, I, that's important. I'm a civil engineer. You know, I got to see a site in my mind before I can start running out there with bulldozers. I got to kind of see what the heck's going to happen out there some way, somehow. So, you know, work on this if it's something you need to work at. Um, why don't I get you a couple of these to do for Friday? Or maybe three of them. You guys are looking real energetic today. I'll give you three.
about uh, 191, 2, and 3. They're, they're fairly quick. So 192, 1, and 191, 2, and 3. These will be due Friday. So not tomorrow. They're due, uh, or not, not today, obviously. Friday um, the 13th. Okay. We'll see you all tomorrow.